In this section, I show how to calculate the confidence interval estimation for the population mean mu in the case where the population standard deviation sigma is known. As I explained earlier, a confidence interval provides a range of values, an upper limit and a lower limit within which we believe the true population mean mu lies. But for this to be the case, the distribution of the sample mean x bar must be normal, or at least approximately normal, by virtue of the central limit theorem which we studied earlier, and based upon which we were able to use this construct for the standard normal variable z to calculate probabilities associated with the values of x bar. For the confidence interval estimation, of the population mean, we define it as follows. It's the sample mean x bar plus or minus z multiplied by the standard error of x bar. You would recognize this ratio, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size as the standard error of the sample mean x bar, which we learned in the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now though, when you multiply the standard error of x bar by the value of z, you are calculating what's called margin of error right here. This margin of error is very important because it's going to de determine the interval width between the uh, lower limit and the upper limit. Now, for example, suppose you wish to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. What this simply means is that you're looking at the area, the central region, equal to 0.95, so that one half of this central region would be 0.475, and the other half here would be 0.475. More importantly, the residual regions on the tail area, this region and this region combined, would be equal to 0.05. We refer to it as alpha. Alpha marks off the combined tail region in confidence interval estimation as well as hypothesis testing, which is a concept that you're going to be learning about shortly. So now, based on this area of 0.95, you will find that the corresponding value of z is 1.96. So it's going to be 1.96 on the left and 1.96 on the right. And of course, the value on the left is denoted with a negative to show that it is 1.96 standard deviations below the mean. Now, Observe that because you are looking at the central region equal to 0.95, that one half of the tail region, which is alpha over 2, would come out to be 0 0.025, which is 0 0.05 divided by 2. As well, it will be 0 0.025 on the left. So in this definition, this z with a subscript of alpha over 2 is simply indicating the fact that the value of z is based on the tail region, one half of which is on the left and the other half is on the right. So let's look at a quick example here. Say you take a random sample of 25 adolescents from some developing country and you find that the average weight is 122 pounds with a standard deviation of 20 pounds. You wish to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the true population mean weight. And I'm just making up the story to kind of spice things up a little bit. So you begin by defining the confidence interval right here. And then you substitute. X bar is 122. That's the sample mean point estimate that you obtained from this sample of 25 adolescents. The Z value for 95% confidence is 1.96. And then this is the standard error, 20 over the square root of 25, which comes out to be 4. So if you multiply this 4 by the value of z, you are calculating the margin of error, which here is 7.84 pounds. So the lower limit would be the sample mean of 122 
minus 7.84. That gives you 114.16. While the upper limit would be 122 plus 7.84. And that's going to give you 129.84 pounds. And I have shown the illustration right here for the lower limit and the upper limit. So in conclusion, you would say that you are 95% confident that the true average weight of adolescents in this emerging country, emerging economy if you like, ranges from 114.16 pounds to 129.84 pounds. We can get these results on Excel as well. And here I've shown the format for data entry. So let's go there. So confidence interval here is 95%. So 0.95. And alpha here would be 1 minus 0.95. So you could just simply type in 0.05 and you'll be good. And for this problem, sigma, the standard deviation here is 20, and sample size here is 25. The sample mean is 122. Now, to calculate the uh, limits of the interval, what Excel allows us to do is to calculate the margin of error, actually, using this function here, which I've written out for you. So let's do it. Equal confidence. Open parenthesis. You can type in lowercase or upper, uppercase, it doesn't matter. For alpha, you click on this cell right here, comma. It prompts you for a standard deviation, you click on this cell here, comma. And it prompts you for size, meaning sample size, you click on this cell. And then you close parenthesis. And of course, I, I wrote it out here for you. And then you hit enter, and that's it. That's your margin of error. In other words, Z multiplied by the standard error right here. So we have to manually calculate the lower limit and the upper limit of the interval. For lower limit, it's going to be equal to x bar minus the margin of error. And for the upper limit, it's going to be x bar minus the mar sorry, plus actually, the margin of error. And that's it. Next, we can also use one of several websites to find the limits of the interval. One of my faves is this one right here, Hyperstat. So let's, let's go there. Now, to find confidence intervals, you want to choose this, this second option here. You click, you click on it. And then for area, it's going to be 0.05. So 0.05 would be the alpha region. That's what the area here is uh, indicating. The mean here refers to the sample mean we obtained, which is 122. And standard deviation here, now be careful. It does not refer to the standard deviation of the population, which is 20 in this example, but rather the standard error of x bar, which is 4. All right, if I go back here, and I go back a little bit, you will see that the standard error of x bar, which is 20 over the square root of 25, is equal to 4. So that's what you type in there. And then you click here, outside. Because what it does is to shade the tail regions, the alpha over 2 regions, and give you the limits corresponding to those two regions, which as you can see here are 114.16 on the lower side and 129.84 on the upper side. That's really it. So a couple of uh, final notes here, two important implications. One is when sampling from the same population using a fixed sample size, the higher the confidence level, the wider the confidence interval. In other words, if you raise your confidence level from, let's say, 95% to 99%, your confidence interval would be wider insofar as you keep the sample size the same. So let's see what this really implies. Um, actually, let's go to Excel. It's better explained there. 
So here, if we were to raise right now the width of the interval equal upper limit minus lower limit. So this is the width of the interval right now, 15.68, based on a confidence interval of 95%. Now, if I increase this from 95% to 99%, let's do that. Observe, the interval width increases from 15, approximately, to now over 20. Now, what exactly does this mean? Actually, I call it um, a case of playing it safe in confidence interval estimation. Now, suppose I calculate the 90% confidence interval uh, for the estimation of tomorrow's average temperature. And I'm, I'm trying to make up a story so you can understand the, the uh, concept behind this. Now, uh, let's say I come up with a lower limit of 70 degrees and an upper limit of 80 degrees. So I have interval width of 10 from 70 to 80. However, you'd like me to raise my confidence level from 90% to 99% in my forecast. In other words, you'd want me to be more assuring in my forecast because the forecast that produced the limits of 70 to 80 degrees is uh, the confidence level is 90%. And so in response, I then state that, okay, I'm 99% confident that tomorrow's temperature would range from 40 degrees to 90 degrees. So I kind of give you a much wider interval. So I raise my confidence level from 90 to 99, but the interval now is wider. The interval has grown from 70, 80 to 40, 90. Thus, for me to exhibit such high level of confidence, I'd have to play it safe by giving you a much wider range of values within which I'm almost certain tomorrow's average temperature would lie. But as you can see, the wider the interval, the lower is its precision. So by increasing my confidence level in this example from 95 to 99 percent, um, in effect, I'm going to give you a much wider interval so as to be pretty sure that the real deal would lie within it. But being pretty sure that the real deal would lie within it, look over here how much wider the lower uh, limit to the upper limit now is. The second implication here is when sampling from the same population using a fixed confidence level the larger the sample size, the narrower the confidence level. So let's demonstrate this again on Excel. So initially we had 0.95, so let's keep it where it was before. Now suppose I were to increase my sample size from 25 to let's say 100. Now watch the interval width. it shrank big time to 7.84. If I raise it some more to 150, it drops some more to 6.40. So obviously, in performing any kind of um, study, if you choose a larger sample, you'd be incorporating additional data which would increase the informational strength of the study that you are performing. So the more data that you're incorporating in your analysis, the more likely you'd be obtaining the right kind of information, which speaks to the property of consistency that we learned earlier, which means that the likelihood, the probability that your um, estimates would approach the real, the true population mean, in this case, that that likelihood would increase, the probability would approach 1 as sample size increases. So there is definitely truth to the fact that the larger the sample size, the more likely you'd obtain results that are close to the true information that you seek. And this concludes this section.